Hi and welcome to the fourth and the final of the core videos of SEO from scratch. What we're going to be looking at now is how to get as many people as possible to see your content with a minimum effort and also to track your success. So we're assuming that you've done some keyword research, you've identified an attractive search phrase that you want to attack and you've created some good content preferably great content. What we need to do now is we need to get that snowball rolling because when great content gets attention that attention then creates links when people see it and the links get more attention and that's how the whole thing snowballs. Now it is true in web publishing and in SEO as it is in so many other areas of life that the rich get richer. The people who have the most links, the people who are already getting attention, will be getting more links and more attention more quickly than people who don't. So if we're just starting out, you're link poor and that sucks. But all you can do is start doing something about it. There's nothing to be gained by waiting and there's nothing to be gained from inaction. We've got to take action. But all of this depends on time. It all needs an investment of time and effort, sometimes money. But the sooner you start, the sooner that snowball is going to pick up. So I'm assuming at this point that you've already created the greatest content that you can conceive of. You may not have actually created it from scratch yourself. Maybe you've combined some other stuff from other places, but you've done something that's valuable, that's worthwhile. And if you can't do that yourself, that you've found somebody else who can do it for you. So let's go. So this is how the snowball works, and I'm shamelessly borrowing Google Chrome's logo for this. It's really got three parts. When you have great content, then great content can generate links and stuff. So that might be inbound links, it might be direct visits, it might be bookmarks, it might be social shares. And all of that can help your rankings, which helps you get more traffic. And when that traffic sees your great content, it'll generate more links and stuff, which will generate more traffic, and the whole process rolls on from there. So that's how the snowball works. So when it comes to getting your snowball going, We've got a whole range of options, and I'm going to cover as much as I can in this video, but there really is no end to the choices of what you can do to promote your content, and really it's only limited by your own creative thinking. So social media obviously plays a big part, and it's going to play an increasingly important role over time. Link building is still perfectly valid, and we're going to talk about that. Overall with link building, the thing I want to say is that it's really not worthwhile trying to create lots of low-value links yourself. Building links yourself is like being a bricklayer. What I want you to think of yourself as is more the architect. And that's where you create a system where other people will build your links for you. And the key, of course, to that is really, really good content. There's also a point at which SEO and promotion becomes PR. It's a case of getting your message out there, it's a case of building your brand, getting attention by hook or by crook, by any means necessary. And again, you can be as creative as you like. Don't ignore email. Email is a fantastic channel, and I'm going to talk about that as well. And anything else that you can think of, it all matters. So let's talk about social promotion. I'm a big fan of passive social promotion. Now what do I mean by that? I mean that you aren't necessarily the one who's out there pushing and pushing and pushing for attention. The ideal social promotion is when people will spontaneously choose to promote your stuff because your stuff is great. And passive social promotion, when people choose to share your great content on Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus One or any of these other social channels, that will create a really nice, organic, natural-looking profile. And the search engines are looking more and more for these natural-looking profiles. So make it easy for other people to promote your content. Now, a lot of websites will have the visit our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter, for example. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think there's a lot more value in the buttons that say tweet this, like this on Facebook, share this, add this to Google Plus One, I think that's a better way to go. So here's an article on web design from scratch, all about snowballing your traffic, 
and these buttons here that say tweet so I can just click that and it will add a tweet this one's for adding it to stumble upon this is Google plus one sharing it on LinkedIn or liking it or sending it to other people using Facebook and having buttons like this makes it so easy for people to choose to share your content if I scroll down to the bottom of the page we have the same buttons repeated there so when you've finished reading the article then you've got another opportunity to share this is my client Marissa Peer's website you can see that this page has been tweeted 611 times so I've just reused the same code there and this is another one of my clients pages this is SpanishForPreschoolers.com and this one uses a nice WordPress plugin that adds those social buttons to the side and they are omnipresent so here we've got Facebook tweet dig and stumble upon and wherever you scroll on the page those buttons will follow you around so there's a lot of different ways to add these buttons to your page here's a tool that can help make it easy for you this is addthis.com I recommend you take a look and add this gives you several options for different types and styles of button that you can choose so you select the one that you like click get add this and it will invite you to register and you can choose to do that or you can just close that and you can get the code straight there so it's pretty easy these days to add those social adding buttons to any site and I definitely recommend you do that on all of your great content overall the key to social media is influence it's not really a question of quantity sure it's possible to go out and do searches on Twitter for anybody who's typing in one of your particular keywords and then follow anybody who's mentioning that and a proportion of those people will follow you back and maybe you can add five or ten followers in an hour using that method and if you do that for hours and hours and days and days then you may be able to build up a following of hundreds or thousands of people but what is the quality of that following how interested are those people in what you're doing or what you're saying my tip would be to concentrate instead on developing those relationships and friendships with key people but try and build relationships with the people who have the most influence if you can get followed by people who are liked and followed by lots of other people then your message will be able to be spread further than by working really hard and trying to get lots of low-grade followers yourself concentrate on the relationships set out to build relationships and reputation and that means having integrity and you can't spoof that there's no shortcuts to integrity your social media campaign should really start with choosing your identity choosing who you are who you're going to be to the world and integrity is about maintaining that brand being that identity in everything that you do so all the tweets that you make the things that you choose to share or retweet all the content that you write it should all be focused with the same values and the same purpose and it's okay to have a Twitter ID for you or a Facebook page for you personally where you chat with your family and friends and you share pictures of your dog there's nothing wrong with that but if you want to use social media in the professional sphere as well I would definitely recommend that you have a separate Facebook page a separate Twitter ID I'd also recommend that you be more like this guy and I mean this seriously if you've seen the movie Godfather the way that this mafia leader builds his influence is by doing favors for other people and he does lots of favors for lots of other people now I'm not recommending that you go out and uh, get people shot or chop their heads off racehorses that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is when you're thinking about social influence give first do favors for others and then later on you will find that they will naturally want to repay those favors to you and when you need something doing you can ask and the friends that you've built up will respond and the same thing goes with linking as well don't be afraid to link out to other people that you respect other people may be within your industry linking to other people promoting other people's stuff is all part of having that integrity within your field if it's relevant if it's good if it's useful don't be afraid to share it 
and you can write about what other people say and you can comment on what other people create online as well. That can actually be a really good way to get their attention and to build influence with other reputable people within your field. Academics do this all the time offline and probably online and we should also be doing it as well in our online marketing. So now we're going to talk about link building and one of the important things that you need to bear in mind is overall Google wants to see natural growth. It's actually fairly easy to spot the difference between a website that is being promoted unnaturally versus a website that grows in a natural fashion. Now, I recommend that you have a look at this article. It's on seobook.com, Aaron Wall's site, that shows you the different kind of link growth profiles. So the most natural link growth profile is the green line, it's the geometric line. That's when something starts from not very much, builds and builds and builds, and that's the snowball effect that you can see right there. The growth in links is steady, but it also increases over time. A linear line could look very unnatural. If you have a website that gets exactly 50 links every month, then that would seem to us and to Google certainly that there's a campaign going on, that people are actually going out buying a certain number of links every month. So you certainly don't want that. The blue line represents the spiky model, where some content gets no links for five months and then suddenly gets a bunch of links. And then it gets no links for a bit more time. Then it suddenly gets a bunch of links. And that also is going to look unnatural. If content is good enough to get a large number of links in a short period of time, there's nothing wrong with that things go viral, it happens all the time, but they don't get a bunch of links very quickly and then get none at all. Links that arrive in that way have been manufactured, not earned. So here's some tips for link building. As I said before, you don't want to be in the business of creating links one by one yourself, particularly if they're crappy links. Building crappy links is like rolling the snowball uphill. You have to do all the work. So what kind of links do you want to get? The best advice I can give is to go for links that will actually bring visitors because that supports the snowball model. You want links that are actually going to bring people. Don't go for links just for the purposes of trying to get up in the search engine rankings because you have to keep pushing, you have to keep rolling that way and the moment that you stop your traffic's going to stop, your growth is going to stop. When you go for links that are actually going to be seen and followed by people that are going to bring visitors and bring eyeballs to your content then your traffic will grow and if your content's good enough then the snowball will carry on because it'll generate more attention and more links and you'll be part of that rich getting richer crowd. So my tip is, look for the most appropriate, the most relevant, the most visible, and the most likely to be clicked links. So let's talk a little bit about outreach. It is worth going for links. It is worth trying to get free links. But you need to go for the links that have quality. And outreach means simply this, asking the right people for links. And generally what that means is, browsing the web, looking around, finding a page where it would be natural and appropriate and helpful for there to be a link from that page to your content. And when you've got that early stage content, that step one, step two content that we've been talking about, it becomes easier to attract those kinds of links. So you can simply send an email to the person who runs the website, the blogger, whoever it is, and say, I was reading your page, it looks great, I've written this article or I've got this video or I've got this list of tips and I think that would be a really useful resource for the visitors who come to your page so I'd really appreciate it if you would add a link to this and if that content is not very commercial particularly you will find it relatively easy to get those links through because people want to add value and when somebody is genuinely out there to help their visitors and help their readers then if you can give them really valuable content that is really going to help them, then why wouldn't they link to you? But if all your content is directly commercial, directly selling, you're going to have a harder job to request links from other people. So here's a tip. Ask yourself, whose job is it to tell other people 
about great stuff like this. So maybe go one step back in the awareness ladder. Think what question or what problem does your content help solve? Then do a search online for that question or that problem. Find pages where people are discussing it and you'll find a bunch of great prospects for approaching with your link building outreach. Also ask what's in it for them. What's in it for the person who owns that page, the person who runs that blog? They need a reason to want to link to you. Now you can certainly bribe them to do it. I've done this before. I, I've offered people a free copy of an ebook if they add a link. And maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. One thing that's worked really well for me in the past, and I did this for Spanish for Preschoolers that we looked at, is to contact people who are commentators within the language education sphere. And I contact them directly and personally, and I'm not asking for a link at all. What I do is I say, would you like to evaluate and review this product? And if they say yes, I send them a copy. It's a PDF. It costs me and costs the content owner nothing at all to do that. I send them a copy, and several of those people have then written reviews and linked back to the site because I'm giving them something. I'm giving them some useful content. I'm giving them some material that they can use in their own publishing, and they're grateful for it. And I did that without even asking for links. And overall, be bold. You've got to have balls in this. Think about the PR industry, the people who go out, they get on the phone, they badger people, they cajole them, they entertain them, they beg if they need to. But you know, get out there, get stuck in. Don't be afraid to ask. And if you don't get a response, don't be afraid to ask again. Sometimes it can take three or four emails in order to get one good link. But those good links are worth the effort. So we always need to be thinking about the return on investment from link building because there's so many different things that we can be doing. We need to find the ways that are going to get us the best results for the minimum effort. So if you're doing outreach, it's quite likely that only one email in every 20 that you send out will actually generate a link. But great links are worth it. Great links are worth far more than crappy ones. So I would say to you, do this outreach, contact those people, but go for the links that are really worth having. Go for the links from pages where people are already looking, where people actually genuinely need what you're offering. It is also legitimate to go out and buy links sometimes. You can buy text ads from other sites where they will add a link to your site in return for a payment. Google doesn't like that particularly, but Google's money comes from Google AdWords, so that's actually their business as well. There are usually lots of directories within a sector. So if you've got a particular business site, do a search for your type of business directory, and you'll get a bunch that'll come up. And these can be quite valuable. Reciprocal links are when one website links to another, and that other website also links back to the first one. So Jack links to Jill, and Jill also links to Jack. Now it's said that these links are less valuable than just a one-way link where Jack links to Jill but Jill doesn't link to Jack. But they're still better than no link at all. So I wouldn't avoid these. And if you contact somebody and say, it would be great if you would link to my content, and they say, that's fantastic, um, would you mind linking back to my article, then there's nothing wrong with that at all. And also I'd advise that you seriously consider guest blogging. If you think that it might take you three hours to write a blog post that's going to go on somebody else's website, if that website is high value, if it's relevant to what you do, if it gets seen by a lot of people, and if that page is going to get page rank and pass some juice back, but most importantly, if it's going to pass eyeballs back, if people are going to follow the link and come and see your content, then that may be three hours well spent. And it might be better spent than writing a bunch of emails. But only time will tell. Every sector is different. So my advice is to try a variety of techniques, track how much time and how much effort that you invest in different tactics, and then maybe focus on the ones that work best. Here's another tactic you might want to use, which is copying your competition. And there are several ways that you can find out who's linking to your competitors. And one is Open Site Explorer. So here's Open Site Explorer for MarissaPier.com. And because I'm logged in, I can see a variety, the full list. 
and here if when you click on inbound links it's showing you the links in order here of page authority what are the most authoritative pages that are linking to Marissa's site starting with her own Twitter feed one of my sites a newspaper site another one of my sites for example so if you were to put your competitor in here you can see who's linking to that competitor you can then look at these pages in turn and ask yourself would it be possible for me to get a link from that page or would it be possible for me to get a link from a page like it SEO Spyglass is another and I'll give you the link for this SEO Spyglass is a desktop application and this is what it looks like you type in the URL of a competitor for example here again I've put in Marissa's site and then it goes away and it looks at a lot of sources to find any backlinks it can pointing to this website then it figures out from the pages page rank and how many links there are on the page the value of those links so I would generally start from the top and go down and you can click on these and it'll pull them up in your browser and again you can then ask yourself could I get a link like that another option is to type link colon and then a particular website or file name into Google so let me show you how that works so if I type in link colon www.marissapier.com this is then Google's list of pages that link to this website so here we've got one from Q Smoking that's from the site itself here's one from zsweet.eu and this is a company that manufactures a natural sweetener that Marissa has promoted and they already link back to Marissa so there's another free quick way to find valuable pages that are linking back and here if you've got the Mozbar plugin from SEO Moz you can see the page authority of those pages as well so I would generally aim to get links from pages that have some authority so there can be some merit to this approach but basically what you're doing there is you're copying what your competitors are doing and there are some risks to that on one level you'll always be playing catch-up with your competitors so I say that copying is okay but if you can do better than your competitors that's better right another risk is that if your competitors are using the wrong tactics if they are getting links from the wrong places if those links are unhelpful or potentially even damaging to their rankings don't go copying that I would say in general use this method for inspiration but don't make this the only method that you use and also don't forget to copy yourself if you type in link colon and then your own website into Google or you use spyglass or whatever look out for sites that link to you that you didn't know link to you and it can be a lot easier to get another link from a site that already links to you than to get a brand new link from a brand new site of course it's always preferable to get a link from a new site because that increases the number of unique domains that are linking to you but if you find a website that has authority that is seen by people that's getting a lot of eyeballs and then if you can come up with a reason why they should link to you from another page in another way then you're probably going to find that quite an easy and rewarding way to get new links and as I said let's not forget email email is an incredibly powerful medium okay what this is all about is eyeballs when you need to get the ball rolling what you need is you need people to see your content you've created great content the first step is to get people to see it and email lists can give you that kind of acceleration so let me give you a method right if you can create an offer that requires an opt-in say people have to put in their name and email address in order to get a free ebook a free report a free video whatever it is and if you can approach somebody who is well known well connected they've got a busy website and they've probably already got a good email list you approach them with an affiliate deal so you say to them if you send this promotion to everyone on your email list and they come through I will split the proceeds of this 50 50 with you or I will give you all the proceeds of this but when those people from that email list come along they need to join your email list in order to take advantage of the promotion and you are then building your email list and email lists are really really valuable 
I would say your email list should be your number one asset if you have one. If you haven't, you need to start one. And the two places I would recommend looking would be aweber.com and mailchimp.com. They make it really easy to add those forms where people can subscribe to your email list to your website. And you can also do things like send out a file once people have subscribed, for example. And there, that is the footer promotion that pops up on Web Design from scratch when people go there for the first time. So after 20 seconds of reading my content, they'll get this promotion. This is called Optin Crusher. It, it's free. It's a plugin for WordPress. You can get it from optincrusher.com. And I definitely recommend that you should think about what can you give away in order to persuade people to join your email list. I have been told that the average lifetime value of a name on an email list is £10 or about $16. So if you can get 100 people to sign up to your email list, that should be worth about $1,600 once you can find a way to monetize that list. But that is the average value to a business of having a name on an email list worldwide. So when you've started to get traffic, hopefully your rankings should start to improve. And I'm going to show you now my method for tracking rankings. But let's ask what really matters about rankings. I've seen a bunch of tools that say your ranking for this term has gone up, your ranking for that term has gone down, and they tell you how many places you've gone up or gone down. Does that actually matter? It doesn't matter at all. Rankings themselves don't matter. What matters is traffic. So you could have some bizarre long tail term that nobody's searching for and you could discover that you've gone up from number three to number one on Google for some random term. And you might be congratulating yourself and popping champagne for that. But if nobody's searching for that term, there's going to be no traffic from that term. And if there's no traffic, then it doesn't matter what position you are in the search rankings, right? So any ranking process, if it's going to be worthwhile, has to take into account how many people are searching for that. It also has to take into account where you are in the rankings, okay? So you could go from position 50 to position 30 for one term, and that is going to make absolutely no difference whatsoever to how much traffic you get. Because there's no traffic at 50 and there's no traffic at 30 either. But if you slip from position 2 to position 3 for a popular term, then that could make a massive difference to your rankings. So you only need to know two things. One is which ranking changes are most impacting your traffic. And the second is where you can focus your effort for the most positive impact on traffic. So let me show you my tool. Let me give you my tool for tracking your rankings. So this is the SEO master Google Doc that you will have used for your keyword research. So this one's been running for a little while. I've got the keyword research on my keyword research tab there and I've found a bunch of phrases that I want to track. So here on the hit list and traffic tracking tab I enter those phrases that I want to track and it pulls in automatically the number of searches per month and the traffic appeal there. And then all I need to do is I need to put in where I am ranking on my chosen search engine at that particular day and then the tool will tell me how much traffic on average I would expect to receive in a month for that particular ranking for that particular term and it's taking into account the searches per month for that term which is absolutely critical. So here we've made a good start on overcome fear and get pregnant we're at position 4 and 10 those are very low traffic terms relatively speaking so we could expect 13 visits for one and nine for the other totaling 22 at the top and then what you do I would suggest doing this a week apart is you update those terms and there you can see we've started ranking for diets that work but we've gone down for those two low traffic terms for example and here's what it does it shows you how much traffic you can expect for each one of those terms and here they're all zero because this was the beginning of a campaign with new content so the total estimated traffic was zero the change was a drop of 22 because the, it thought we could get 22 for these head terms in the previous week or uh, the previous time we, we checked and now it's gone down, it's gone down 100% but we're not too concerned about that because we're tracking over time. So 
obviously these terms that we're tracking here it's not going to be all the search terms that people use to get to your website so I haven't got for example Marissa's name as one of these terms which is her most popular search term there's no point because she's always ranking at number one for her own name I'm also not putting in very low traffic long tail terms even though that's where a lot of your traffic is going to come from all we're doing here is we are tracking the head terms that we are specifically targeting for this website so you can see that as we go along the numbers are changing week on week and I'll show you in a minute how to get these numbers very easily so here we've gone up from position 28 to 17 for diets that work and that's starting to get us traffic which should start to get us traffic so we can expect 12 a month of that that's an increase of 12 overall here we've gone up to position 11 which means 40 an increase of 28 or based on our, over, our, our previous total score increase of 236 percent and that is what is going to matter over time that's what we're looking at because this is a high traffic term this is a term that gets searched a lot this is diets that work that get searched in the UK 3,600 times per month. Now changes in ranking for a more popular term like that is going to make a much bigger difference than changes in ranking for something like Overcome Fear with only 170 searches in the UK per month. And changes at the top of the ranking, changes in the top 10 will have a much much greater effect than changes on page 2 or page 3 or 4 which will have no effect. So here you can see in this last weekly check that we did we've got an increase of 7 because we've come from 22 which is on page 3 onto page 2 for this particular term. So what is this method going to be telling you? Well it's going to tell you those two most important things. Which ranking changes most impact your traffic and we want to pay attention to particularly anywhere that we slip down in a way that is going to impact our traffic considerably and if that happens then we know to focus our promotional attention on that phrase where we might have slipped down where a competitor may have done a bit more work and we need to, to do a bit more work to catch up and secondly it can also show you where to focus your effort for the most positive impact on traffic so if I go back here just looking at this I can see that coming up from 17 to 11 for that term has given us a real boost in traffic and I know that the difference between position 11 and position 10 is significant so I really need to be focusing my effort on these relatively high ranking terms that are the most bus busy ones as well because I've got these ordered roughly in terms of number of searches per month I can change that pretty easily so there we are we've reorganized in terms of searches per month so when I go along here I know that to start ranking for these terms near the top is going to make a big difference but right now my best opportunity is to get this number 11 a little bit higher so I would definitely encourage you to use this tool there is no other rank tracking tool on the market that's like it now let me show you where to get your rankings from so this is the Rank Tracker tool. It comes from SEO Power Suite, the same place that we get SEO Spyglass. And I'll show you how it works. It's very quick. Now this, again, this is the free version. This is not the paid for version, so I can't save my progress. But if I put in my URL, risappear.com, then I select which search engines I want. So I'm just going for Google UK, so I'm going to do select none there. I'm going to scroll down to UK and select google.co.uk the web. Now it wants me to put in my keywords so I just go back to my document, I select these, I copy and I paste them into that box and now it's going off to google.co.uk and it's checking all of my keywords one at a time and it's going to tell me if I'm ranking in the top 100 for any of these can take a bit of time the more keywords you've got the longer obviously it's going to take and the more search engines that you're checking the longer it's going to take and then we're done I'll just click finish and I'll see what my rankings are so what I would do now is just shorten this off here stretch that down and I'll drag the window across so I can see both documents at the same time
Then I would copy this block in, resize the columns, and then I can go and copy these values in. It's probably worth saying view freeze columns freeze one column so that that column always stays there. Then when I scroll back down here, this is now the 19th of April, because I checked them yesterday, and we'll see if anything's changed. Diets that work, we were we are now at 12, so we've dropped one place on there. Fear of flying is 55, so we've jumped up 11 places on that one. Get pregnant is 46. So these are just changes since yesterday. Healthy diet plan is 17. So we've gained one place there. Hypnosis for weight loss, 22. Lose weight is 60. And overcome fear at 92. So we've lost a little bit of traffic there from diets that work by dropping that one place. Obviously that's where I need to focus my effort. But this is a pretty quick method, definitely, definitely worth using because there's nothing else out there on the market that I've seen that will give you this type of intelligence that will tell you where you need to be focusing your effort for the best return. So to sum up, there's our model, creating great content, generating some links and stuff. Even the best content in the world is going to do you no good at all unless people can see it. That'll generate traffic and then the process just carries on. So you create great content, step one, give it a push give the snowball a push down the hill then you go out there you share you give you be generous you make friends it's all about relationships and influence all about being who you choose to be be yourself be your brand you've got to track your progress and importantly once you've got that intelligence you need to respond to what it's telling you and finally don't stop and that is my complete SEO process. Over the course of these four videos, I've shown you exactly what I do for my own sites and what I do for my client sites. And guys, this stuff does work. But now it's over to you because it only works if you do it. So please try out these systems and these processes for yourself. And I really want to hear your feedback. If you find any errors anywhere, do let me know because I'm constantly improving these tools but I hope they bring you as much success as they've brought for my clients and I wish you the very best of luck.